Let's bring in retired Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis, the senior fellow at Defense Priorities and host of Daniel Davis Deep Dive on YouTube. Lieutenant Colonel, it's so great to see you. Always oh, good to see you. At this point, how likely is it that the Israel-Hamas war will widen into other Middle Eastern nations? I, I think it is extremely high, very uncomfortably high. N nothing is guaranteed, nothing is for sure until it does or doesn't happen. But with all the pieces in place, all the comments coming from the various uh, actors and all the history that's been going on, even just within the last you know eight or nine months and also in the last two or three months, I think the chances are pretty high because uh, yeah, from Iran's perspective, uh, you know, they try to kind of de-escalate a little bit with a moderate response after the April attack on their embassy in, in Syria. Uh, and now that they see here, uh, a member of the, uh, you know, their ally was assassinated in the capital city uh, on top of other Hezbollah leaders that were also assassinated nearly the same time. Uh, and, and I think that it, they probably are coming to the conclusion that what they've been doing isn't working. And I expect that they're going to step it up and do something more than they did last time, which has a lot of ramifications, especially given all that American firepower you just mentioned is going to the region. You know, and before we talk about uh, the Hezbollah commander who was killed, I'd like to talk about uh, the Hamas leader because both Tehran and Hamas are blaming Israel for the killing of Hamas political leader Ismail Hanaya. Israel has not confirmed nor denied involvement, but at this point, Lieutenant Colonel, do you think that even matters? Oh, I, I mean, in, in practical terms, it doesn't. But I mean, I, I don't know who else would have, you know, taken him out. But the fact that the, it's the most likely out uh, culprit is Israel, when, given the fact that he was the chief negotiator for the Hamas side, trying to find a negotiated settlement and a ceasefire, which is what America says in our primary policy. Uh, and then you you assassinate all these other people in highly uh, provocative locations, especially, it seems as though someone's actually spoiling for something to happen. This is not something that someone does. I'm just being honest here. This is not the actions of somebody who wants to de-escalate or keep things from exploding. It looks more like somebody is trying to precipitate something. Well, I do. Let's talk about that then. You know, because Israel is taking credit for assassinating this high-ranking Hezbollah commander last week. So, so two leaders taken out uh, in in really just a space of hours. How does all of that further potentially complicate everything that is already happening in that region? Well, I mean, I mean, especially you have the United States. I mean, it's kind of an, a humiliation for us. I got to be honest, because we keep putting all of our political capital in finding a negotiated settlement, in reaching at least a ceasefire so that we can have an end to the war. And then now then someone assassinates, you know, this chief negotiator for the other side. So now then there's no possibility for any kind of a negotiated settlement, no chance to get our hostages back in the near term. And whatever chance there had been has now been harmed. And so I, th I think that it's time for America to start saying, hey, we need to be looking out for our interest and not just reflexively doing whatever Israel wants. Well, speak Speaking of the U.S., Lieutenant Colonel, moments ago, the State Department uh, did hold a press briefing talking about how the assassinations are impacting ceasefire talks. Let's listen to a piece of that. So I wouldn't characterize them as stalled. Uh, I would characterize them the way we have said before, which is we have reached an agreement on the framework. That agreement still stands. Nothing that's happened over the course of the past week has done anything to erode the fundamental agreement on the framework uh, to this ceasefire. Um, that stands, but where we um, also what's true is that we continue to have other areas where we need to bridge the differences between the two parties. And so, look, ultimately, it's not a decision the United States can make. It requires the parties to take these choices, and it requires the parties to get to yes um, and not look for reasons to delay and not look for reasons to say no. And so the message that we have consistently communicated to everyone in the region is we want to see a ceasefire. We think a ceasefire is in the interest of Israel. It's in the interest of the Israeli people. It's in the interest of the Palestinian people. It is in the interest of the broader region. So we are going to continue to use all of the diplomatic muscle all the influence that we can bring to bear to push to get this ceasefire over the line. All right, Lieutenant Colonel, you heard that right there. And like so many yeah. things, uh, there is what is said, and then there is what you have to read between the lines. What do you think this all means for a potential ceasefire between Israel and Hamas? Yeah, that's that's that's. I, I, I'm personally embarrassed, but you know, he wants to claim that that has no impact. The assassination has no impact, and that all the frameworks are still in place. 
let's see what the Hamas side says. Let's see if they agree with that same interpretation. I'm guessing you're going to get a different answer. And to say that, yes, we're telling all parties that we don't want anybody to do anything to get to a no, and then one side assassinates the chief negotiator for the other side, again, you can't get away from the fundamentals and the facts on the ground. It just belies common sense to suggest that that's going to do anything to move to a negotiated settlement. Oh, that's yeah. just the truth of it. Well, as always, we will see what happens. Great conversation. As always, Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis, thank you. Thank you.